Gun Sports Radio is sponsored by Love Radio Network. Welcome to Gun Sports Radio, all about shooting, hunting, self defense, and more. Now, here are the hosts of Gun Sports Radio, Dave Stahl and Lance Pelkey. All right, folks. Hey, welcome. This is Gun Sports Radio, FM 961, North County, AM 1170, San Diego. We are the answer. This segment is brought to you by Gun Sports Radio, located at 7853 Balboa Avenue. Open 10 to 10, seven days a week. And let me tell you what, they are the Nordstrom's of gun ranges, just not the price. Go to GunRangeSanDiego.com. You can find out all of the schedules, all their classes, specials going on. In fact, we got Hollywood in the house. He'll be picking up Section 3 to discuss what's going on down at uh, Gun Range San Diego. We've got Michael Schwartz in the house, Lance Pelkey, and Hollywood, as we always say. And you have a special guest today. I do. We're gonna we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna try a new segment here. Yeah. Um, the segment is called "Stump My Nephew." Stump the Sam. It's Stump the Sam. Exactly. Oh, right. My nephew Sam is uh, 19 years old, and he's turned himself into an encyclopedia yeah, of right. firearms knowledge. Self proclaimed. So, self proclaimed. Self proclaimed. Exactly. Proclaimed. So we're gonna put it to the test. So we have uh, Sam on the line. Hey, Sam, how you doing? Good. How are you? What were you thinking? You should never challenge this guy. You know you're in trouble. <laughs> no, he's been working hard. He's been studying. You've been studying. You've been studying. Yeah, I have. Uh, I, I only hope I can live up to my reputation. You, uh, you really gave me quite the introduction there. That's right. That's, That's right. right. So be prepared. All right, here we go. So this question comes in uh, from uh, Bob in Ramona, uh, and he writes uh, that the Lee Enfield rifle was the British Army standard rifle uh, from 1895 to 1957. The question is this, Sam. What caliber was this most commonly uh, issued in? And follow-up question, what caliber replaced it? Wait a minute. Two questions? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you, you, you at least get the – got to get at least one of them. You're brutal. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um uh thanks uh bob was it that's uh that's a good question um the uh the lee enfield um came in the 303 british caliber oh was, uh, got it yeah, excellent it was, uh, okay you got was, that uh, one yeah so um they when they replaced it with the uh with the fnfal produced uh they, they adopted it as the l1 slr um in 762 nato how about that? Did about, I did I tell you? You're good. That's man. awesome. Awesome. So, so where are you located? Um, I'm calling in from Virginia. All the way from Virginia. All the way from my All sister's right, kid. Stay He's dry. awesome. Fantastic <laughs> job. We could not stump my nephew. So uh, if you do have a question, thanks, Sam. Thanks for calling in. Great job. If you do have a question for me to ask, uh, if you are able to stump my nephew, um, you'll get a San Diego County Gun Owners t-shirt, and you'll get a three-month membership for free. And uh, I'm sorry, one year, one year membership for free, yeah. one year basic membership for free. And uh, if you do want to ask a question, just go to San Diego County Gun Owners dot com, San Diego County Gun Owners dot com. Yeah. And speaking of San Diego County Gun Owners dot com, we want to uh, uh, talk a lot about uh, we just produced the voter guide for November, uh. the November election. We produced our voter guide. Uh, these are candidates on the local level only. So these are people that are on the local boards and councils, right, city right. council, uh, county board, uh, school boards, who are pro-Second Amendment, are uh, viable candidates, and uh, are uh, uh, basically have, are of good character. Right. That's, and that's you the vetted character. them. So that's the reason why this is a list you people could uh, follow with, with clear conscience. Yeah, we vetted them thoroughly. You know, this isn't just a, a mass... You know, we didn't just send out a mass email saying, hey, answer the questionnaire, mm -hmm. and then we just kind of go by their answers on the questionnaire. When we vet candidates, we get to know them. Mm -hmm. We get to know their staff. We get to we want to know what their plan is. We want to know how much money they've raised. We want to know what they're going to spend their money on. And can they be Democrat or Republican? With any party. Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. See, that's the beauty of what you do. You're not just saying, well, I'm only going to talk to Republicans. Exactly. No, we went across the board. We also uh, do a bunch of background checks. We check for uh, uh, public statements. We look at any applicable voting record. And what we not everybody that asked for a 
for a an endorsement got one. Right. So this is this you know then we put it in front of the board. The board votes. Um, so we take this very seriously, and I would say that this is probably the most important thing that we as an organization do. And if I may, for the listeners out there, you all found out how important it was during this last uh, gun show thing with the Del Mar you know, gun show and all the bad people voting no against it. Right. It's important to have friends in places, and um, the local elected officials are super important to us as gun owners. So very, nobody very on the ag, ag board's? been endorsed no, is that no, what you're telling no. me <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell yeah. me? no 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 they uh well what what it is is you know these local boards and councils are really the workhorse of mm-hmm. the political world mm-hmm. in san diego so whenever you have an issue come up that has to do with second amendment issues you know if you can get a school board member involved right. like jim miller who mm-hmm. went down and said hey look our school board you know wants this gun show here or mm-hmm. we got 30 plus you know city council members and mayors uh, to weigh in on this, you know, these are the political workhorses, and these local boards and councils have an enormous impact on what you can and can't do right. when it comes to your Second Amendment rights. So, what we're asking folks to do is, you know, check out our Facebook page, check out our website, sign up for our emails. We are pushing that voter guide big time. So, take that voter guide and do a couple things. One, uh, find somebody on that list. There's about 40 people that we endorsed. Find somebody on that list, reach out to them and say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm in your district. I'm mm-hmm. right next door to your district. I want to help. Right. What can I do? Can I walk a neighborhood? Can I put up a yard sign? Can I do a phone bank? Um, so that's number one. Number two, donate a couple bucks to, to, to one of these uh, folks. You know, a lot of, a lot of people think that uh, donations have to be, you know, thousands of dollars. But I got to tell you, if you can just, you know, go on their website and give them 20 bucks or 30 bucks, I mean, that, you know, and if enough people do that, mm-hmm. um, they're going to have the funding they need to be successful candidates. Right. And then the third thing we want you to do is get that voter guide in front of as many people as you possibly can. Everybody's got a nice big circle of influence. You have, uh, Friends, family, uh, coworkers, you know, shooting buddies, that sort of thing. A lot of people are part of different organizations. Get this voter guide in front of them. Have a voter guide party. There you go. Have, Bring yeah. some people over, have a barbecue, and then sit down and discuss it. I got to tell you, if somebody wants to do that, uh, You'll reach come. out to Oh, yeah, we'll come out there. We'll that's tell only because I said barbecue. Well, I love barbecue. I know Dave. you do. I mean, that's. <laughs> and musky. <laughs> and musky. For some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> no, but he's dead serious, folks. I, I really mean, am. he's that passionate about it. And you know, and if it, and and he's right. If we can get a group together to where they can all hang out, and then it's better to have you come down because you can you can answer all the questions because you vetted them all. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do that. I'll bring the the Danish. You you supply the coffee. There you But that's quite that. a process that you go through and oh. vetting these folks and lining them up, yeah. and then and then finding out when they they fill out a form and answer a bunch of questions, and then. You might think that they're thinking one way, but they fill out the form and answer the questions another way. And you right. go, whoa, wait a minute. Right. You and, know, this isn't real. Yeah, you were in the room. You remember. Yeah, there were a lot I of – there were people that asked for the endorsement that didn't get it um, because we did our research. And that's what's important. So short and, of – And by the way, there's no donation from these candidates to San Diego County gun owners to get on this ballot? No, sir. And None no. whatsoever. In fact, there no. It's not how you get on our, our endorsement. Well, I wanted to throw it <laughs> out there because, you, you know, you know, I just wanted to throw it out there because a lot of people, you know, that are on the negative side, that's the first thing. they. Oh, well, he's probably getting paid to put that list No, together. I, I got to tell you, there are some candidates who asked for our endorsement who uh, have donated to us that did not get our endorsement. Sure. So, I mean, that's, you know. Well, because they believe in what you do. That, well, just because you buy a table at our dinner doesn't mean right. you're going to get our endorsement. We put our money where our mouth is. So, there. But it, all year, all year, people want to know, how can we, what can I do? Right. You know, the Second Amendment, the Second this Amendment. Is, I mean, yeah. It's go time, guys. This is it. Yeah. This is the game. So short of moving to Idaho or Texas, this is what you could do. The, well, yeah. This yeah is I mean, this is do. what people talk about. Oh, I'm going to move to Idaho or Texas well, or whatever. Ahead. You know, but this is what they, they simply could do. Getting this voter guide out yeah. is much easier than moving to Texas. Yeah, and it's right in front of them. You did a, you did all the heavy lifting. Exactly right. Yeah. So don't you know, don't sit on the sidelines. This is this is the time. Get in the game. What's Walk the a couple hours, uh, you know, get this into some hands, get it into some email inboxes, and you can find it at San Diego County dot com. San Diego County dot com. All right. Hey, we're going to take a small break. When we come back, John Dillon's in on the line, and we'll be chatting with him. But first off, Trident Gunsmithing, you got a gun that needs to be worked on, maybe needs to be modified, upgraded, any of the above, we'll go to tridentgunsmithing.com, tridentgunsmithing.com, 
Juan and Dan will be more than happy to do anything and everything needed. They do vintage right up to brand new weapons. They sell guns, too. And they will beat any Glock store price, hands down. You break, you go in there, you want to buy a Glock, you tell them that your price that you got at the other store, these guys will beat it. Why? Because they want you as a friend. All right, we're going to take a small break. This is FM 96.1 AM 1170, The Answer. Hey, welcome back. Gun Sports Radio right here on FM 961 in North County, AM 1170 in San Diego. But you can download the free app, KCBQ app, or listen to iHeartRadio worldwide and around the corner. Hey, do you or any of your family keep a firearm, taser, or any other weapon for personal protection? Do you have or are you going to get a CCW? Well, if you are involved in an incident, what in the world are you going to do? What about bail? What about lawyer fees? Well, if you... Throw $10 at Firearms Legal Protection. That's $10 a month. You'll have peace of mind knowing 24-hour hotline. Legal representation is waiting for you and your family. That's Firearms Legal Protection. Just go to FirearmsLegalProtection.com or you can call them at 469-310-9100. That's Firearms Legal, uh, FirearmsLegal.com. Just give these guys a call, and if you can't find the information, you can always go to GunSportsRadio.com. We have it all right there for you. Okie dokie. Hey, right now we've got John Dillon on the line. He is from the law firm of Gatsky, Dillon, and Balance, LLP. If you ever get yourself in a situation, in fact, if you join Firearms Legal Protection and make a phone call, you might get John Dillon because he happens to be one of the preferred lawyers on their list of legal assistants. But if you haven't done that you still need help go to cafirearmslaw.com cafirearmslaw.com or you can call john at 760-431-9501 760-431-9501 and if you have a tesla 3 you'll get a discount <laughs> She's throwing that in there at the end there huh? hey i'm just trying <laughs> to help you pay for that car my friend i'm just trying to help you pay for it <laughs> Sounds good. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. How about you? Got good news? Good. You got good news? I uh, hardly ever have good news when it comes to California gun law. Yeah, Lee. Uh, you know, but uh, today, instead of doing a legislation update, uh, although please call your governor's uh, office today and uh, encourage him to veto all the anti-gun bills that are at his desk, I will say that, but uh, instead, I think I was going to talk about a subject that's often misinterpreted or misunderstood, and that's uh, the stand your ground and castle doctrines. There's two separate legal principles there. Uh, it's something that comes up every so often when you get a high-profile shooting that occurs. You know, most recently, there's I think one in Florida where a man was shot. And ki- or a man shot and killed another man outside of a liquor store after he was pushed to the ground. And so, like, when things like that come up, uh, you know, a lot of people start talking about standing your ground law. You see a lot of Internet postings of people who like to think they know and understand what the law means, but unfortunately do not. Uh, and it's really important uh, to know and fully understand these uh, principles especially if you're a CCW holder, or even if you have a gun in your home that you have for you know, the unfortunate scenario where you have to defend yourself if someone breaks in. So I was going to touch on these and uh, kind of go over the, the main principles of both of them. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. So uh, first, uh, in California, we do have, and people sh- might be a little surprised by this, is California has a castle doctrine, it's under the Penal Code 198.5, uh, and basically your home is your castle, uh, as the saying goes. And so this, you know, self-defense principle applies to you know one's own home, their place of business, or other real property that they are you know in and inhabiting. And it basically says uh, that if you use uh, you know force or lethal force, uh, there's a uh, 
there's a presumption that you have a reasonable fear of imminent peril of death or great bodily injury to yourself uh, when you use this force on another person who breaks into your home. Uh, and so everyone always assumes that, hey, if, if someone breaks my home, I just get my gun, shoot them, no questions asked. You know, cops will be like, good job doing your civic duty and, uh, you know, go back to bed. But it's not really the case. Uh, the Castle Doctrine only provides a presumptive, uh, you know, opinion here on that, hey, if someone breaks in your house, it's presumed that you were in fear of your life and that you thought someone was going to, you know, either cause you great bodily injury or even kill you. However, this is a presumption, a legal presumption. So the if the facts don't support that presumption, it can be, you know, overturned in court. So, you know, you always hear those people, oh, you know, just shoot them out in front of your house and drag them in the house and say, you know, oh, castle doctrine. <laughs> You know, obviously that kind of stuff uh, is not good and it won't help you, and you will go to jail for a very long time if you ever do something like that. Uh, but there is a presumption that if someone breaks into your house, uh, you are in reasonable fear uh, of your life. Now, if a 12-year-old kid is in your house and you wake up in the middle of the night and he's walking out the front door carrying a TV and he doesn't have a weapon and he doesn't even see you, that you're not going to, it's not going to be presumed or the presumption will be overturned that you're in reasonable fear of your life. You got a, a young kid unarmed walking away from you who doesn't know you're there. So shooting someone like that in that scenario and then claiming self defense is, is not going to fly. So we following? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So, the, and then the other principle we have um, that often gets confused or, you know, uh, mixed up with the Castle Doctrine is the Stand Your Ground laws. And I know uh, Florida and their Stand Your Ground laws have been a big topic of discussion, you know, uh, recently, you know, started back with the, the Zimmerman trial on that incident. But uh, in California, we do not have an explicit Stand Your Ground law. However, uh, the the same principles that you know apply in a stand your ground uh, law fall under the general self defense uh, affirmative defense in law so uh, basically if you use force against another whether it's you know general you know fist fighting or lethal force with the firearm uh, you got to meet certain criteria and that and simply put one is a reasonable belief that you are in imminent danger of suffering bodily injury or, you know, suffering death, uh, you reasonably believe that immediate use of force was necessary to stop that danger, and then you use no more force than necessary. So you have to meet all of those factors, and each one of those factors have little subsets of, you know, things that you have to make sure that you meet. But in California, you're not required to retreat uh, before you use force to defend yourself in that type of situation. So, uh, although we don't have an official stand your ground law, the law doesn't require anyone to run away and then be forced into a corner before they can defend themselves. Gotcha. So that's usually when uh, people are pretty surprised. Uh, you know, a state like California, we are very strict on guns and all other, you know, all sorts of stuff like straws and things that are really a, a danger to you. Uh, but. Uh, they do have a, a generally fairly reasonable uh, law on self-defense, and that uh, as long as you uh, meet these requirements, uh, and that it's pretty clear that you are in a reasonable fear of, uh, you know, being hurt or being killed, uh, the law is generally there to support you. But it's uh, something that not and no one wants to ever be in, especially uh, you know. You may survive the fight, they say, but you still got to win the legal battle afterwards. Uh, and that's why it's really important uh, to know these things, especially if you, if you own a gun for self-defense, if you carry a gun, uh, right. a weapons license, sealed weapons license. You know, you got to know that all of this stuff is going to come into play right. when, you know, when and if you ever have to use your gun in self-defense, or you just have to defend yourself without a gun. Right. You, you know? just yeah. You so just got to yeah. General, you, no one punches you. Yeah. 
No, you can't just pull out your gun and start shooting. No. Uh, and this, you know, I, brought, I brought up that shooting in Florida. I, you know, There's a video camera footage that showed everything. Guy ran up and pushed the man, and then guy pulls out a gun. Boom. The guy sees that he pulled a gun and is pointing it at him. He puts his hands up and takes a step backwards, and then he gets shot. You know, no one in their right mind can say that, oh, yes, that guy was in reasonable fear of, you know, uh, you know, being killed by a guy who's like literally with his hands up. So uh, that guy's going to go away for a long time, likely. Uh, well, what about away. that? What about that police officer? She accidentally went into her wrong apartment and thought yeah, it was a- exactly. So this is going to be that's a going to be a really great uh, standard. Yeah, it's going to just be a, an interesting case to see how all of these apply. Yeah. Anyone interested in the subject should follow that case because you have someone who thought they were in their house, sure. thought someone had broken into their house, but is it you know, objectively reasonable? That yeah. How do you walk into someone else's house thinking it's yours? Hey, Mike had a, Mike had a question. Yeah, Hold on a second. Turn on that mic. All right, go they ahead. They don't, they don't, they like to control me. I know. They, so in that case, John, where the, the the police officer walked into what she thought was her own apartment, seems to me that they're going to have to decide, are they prosecuting a civilian or are they prosecuting a police officer? Because if you're if you're a civilian and you walk into a house, I mean, as a civilian, I, I think that she's she's done, you know, well, as a, yeah, uh, you know. I that that is going to be one of the a, a big issue there, and you know she's coming home from work. She's done with her you know uh, shift. So there's, there's a strong argument that yeah, you may be a police officer, but you're not on duty. Mm-hmm. You're acting as a you know normal citizen, uh, and you're in your own home. So the the normal uh, standards that would protect police officers because of the job they have to do probably won't apply. They're mm-hmm. going to, you know, her defense team will definitely be trying to argue that all of that still applies and that she needs to be held uh, to the standards of a, you know, on-duty police officer. But I'm pretty skeptical of that. And it's going to be a very interesting case. Uh, and it really is. It's a matter of, you know, maybe it's an imperfect self-defense. And that's essentially where all these, you know, uh, elements are met, except that, you know, she, although she reasonably believed that she uh, was in her house and she feared for her life, normal people, you know, the jury, the, the objective standard, other people would not come to the same conclusion that she was, uh, you know, reasonably in fear, like, because you, you should have known you weren't in your own house. Well, uh, how could she so be reasonable? It, that's going to be a balance. And if that's how it gets applied, the uh, imperfect self-defense uh, will mitigate a charge. So if you're charged with murder, it could mitigate it down to, you know, manslaughter. Uh, and, and, you know, that may be a backup nice. defense uh, in her case. All right, well, go home, start working on it, get some more <laughs> information, and that'll be our topic next week. Because I got a feeling a whole lot's going to come out. Yeah. next week on that buddy thank you very much folks go to cafirearmslaw.com cafirearmslaw.com and i'm going to stop by and see you monday if you're going to be working sounds great all right folks hey frustrated by the new california laws ars looking for a cost-effective easy solution that allow you to keep your ar featureless and yet still com- uh, comply cali key is your answer go to k-a-l-i-k-e-y.com k-a-l-i-e Y.com and make sure you tell the gang you heard it right here on KCBQ AM 1170 and FM 961. The answer. All right, folks, welcome to Gun Sports Radio, your one stop shop for honest, upfront knowledge. You know, we don't BS nobody. We, we we vet everything we talk about, and we're here to help you. We try to be as non-political as possible, even though one side's a little stranger than the other side. But, hey, this segment's brought to you by Trident Gunsmithing. Trident Gunsmithing for all your uh, gun repairs. They're a great connection, upgrades, and more. They'll also beat any uh, Glock store price. All you have to do is... Go on down there and said, hey, you know, I'm thinking about buying a Glock, and if you have a 
have an invoice or a suggested price, they will be more than happy to meet it or beat it, depending on how skinny that deal is. So tridentgunsmithing.com, tridentgunsmithing.com. All right, we got Hollywood in the house. He's from Gun Range, San Diego. That's your seven-day-a-week, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. gun range. They specialize in new shooters. They absolutely love the new shooters. They like the old guys, too, and the old girls, but they really like new shooters because they like to train their people properly. Tons of ranges, tons of training, a huge library of any and all guns that you could ever want to shoot. All you have to do is tell them why you're there. They'll line you up with a perfectly good rental. And I think on Mondays... Yeah, Mondays, it's uh, $10 off all rentals on Monday. And wow. about 90% of our rentals are only $10. Yeah, and you add a lot of new product almost monthly, right, to the library? Yeah, we do a big rotation. We, uh, I think they have a, a, about 120 different guns to rent. But only, but at one time, there's probably about 80 out, mm-hmm. you know, because they have to rotate the stock, so sure. to speak, you know, to do maintenance and those kind of things. Right. But we, uh, the great thing about the rental fleet is uh, you can shoot what's called off-roster handguns. If Even though the, the handgun may not be on the California-approved roster for sale, uh, you can still go in there and rent it and you know shoot guns that you would normally wouldn't be able to shoot. And make shoot yourself feel bad. In California. Yeah. And, make yourself, <laughs> and make you move out of California. Well, no, they, they make you like really want to get, get a hold of that uh, voter guide and, and do the get, right thing with it. Yeah, totally, 100%. So there's a big celebration coming. Is there going to be a birthday party? We're having a birthday celebration coming up uh, the the Black Friday before Thanksgiving. And uh, I know it's a little early, but we're trying to get the word out as, as soon as possible. And because it's our fourth anniversary, our fourth birthday, we are doing 4% over cost on wow. all wow. handguns in the, in the store. So you can come in and for 4% over cost, that's, that is cheaper than the employee discount. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a real, I mean, it's, we're, we're basically, you know, paying. Giving you them to, away. Yeah, we're basically paying you to take the guns. It's a good thing Veronica went on vacation now because you won't be able to afford it after the anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that the truth? <laughs> so 4% off of no, one four, or two guns? No, it's 4% over cost on any gun in the store. Any gun. Any gun in the store. Whoa. So, you know, if it's... Uh, you know, you shouldn't have said that to Lance and Mike. <laughs> Come on down. A lot of people are looking for their, you know, another gun. You yeah. know, it's a great time to pick something up. You know, and they, it's they've right been looking, be- looking, looking, looking. It's right before the holidays. It's the it's the Black Friday. Can you get gift certificates? Absolutely. Really? Mm-hmm. So you can put it in an envelope and give it to somebody for their birthday or what or have you? birthday, uh, Christmas, and you can, ha- Hanukkah, is it, whatever. Is it just like, like Best Buys? You just put a dollar amount limit on it? Right, yeah, you uh, you you come in, say you want to get a gift certificate. We ask you how much, and you can uh, down to the penny. You can okay. charge it however you want to, you know, charge it up. And uh, and of course, you guys always say, okay, well, that's fine. You're going to spend a thousand dollars, but we're going to get you a five hundred dollar gun, and the other five hundred is going to be for training. <laughs> right. Well, well, we try to uh, <laughs> convince people of that for sure. Yeah. Hey, you know that uh, you need to spend as much on training as you do on the on the firearm for if sure, not more. Right, and you know. Because, you know, uh, marksmanship is a perishable skill for sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah, It's uh, not a bicycle. Right. Yeah. You can, you can you know, be good one week and then just put the gun down and, you know, two years later you'd be like, oh, my goodness, what happened? I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And it's because it is a very perishable skill. Right. Yeah. And with the cost of uh, rounds nowadays, a lot of people yeah. are shooting 9 millimeter rifles, bolt action rifles, yep. rim fire rifles, and they're really tuning up their 22s now. To take them out, a lot of guys will make them look, you know, and act just like the ARs, right. AR fifteen, but it shoots the same, mm-hmm. and uh, the rounds are a lot cheaper. So, yeah, yeah, ammo is not going, you know, not getting cheaper yeah. anytime soon. It's and an ammo doesn't make up. the shooter. Uh, no, it does. I mean, there are definitely there's definitely ammo out there that well, that will perform better than others, but it doesn't make the shooter. You right. can have a three hundred dollar bullet. And miss that target every single time. Right. Yeah. It comes down to you know, practice, like you know, practice, the old saying: practice, it's not practice. the uh, it's not the dope on the rifle; it's the dope behind the rifle. There you go. Did you guys have some rifles left over from your? You had a big rifle sale. Like yeah, we did a big. Uh, we did a big uh, long distance or yeah. precision rifle oh, yeah, sale, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where we had all of our uh, bolt action style rifles uh, on sale, and uh, we got plenty left over. I mean, we. You know, we well, you sell them like we, crazy. Yeah, exactly. We we sell them and we turn around and order them again, 
And uh, you go in there and talk about, hey, I missed the sale, but you know, I was money was tight that week, but now this week it ain't. And I'm sure they'll they'll still work with oh, all those yeah. prices for sure. Well, it's like I said, it's Nordstrom's customer service, just not the price. Yeah, we uh, we really enjoy. Uh, matching people up with the uh, with the firearm that they're looking for, right. fire, you know, for whatever their particular purpose is, whether it's precision shooting, uh, three gun competition shooting, you know, uh, sporting, you know, sporting clays, whatever it is. Uh, we love helping people find. The, I still got to bring my wife down because I bought her the wrong gun. Come on down. I know. I mean, she was at the the gala, you know, the San yep. Diego County Gun Owners Gala, and she was working with Manny. Manny says, what, da, 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 da. she goes, oh, yeah, that's the gun I want. And she looks at me. I went, don't look at me. I mean, you shot the 9 millimeter Smith & Wesson. I didn't pick it. So. Right. So, But but Manny, Manny was kind of interesting. I mean, you guys are in the business to sell guns. But Manny actually said, you know what, Dave, let's just bring her down. Bring your Smith & Wesson 9 millimeter. He says, I'll show her how to rack it. Right, yeah. Instead of buying a new gun, which he could have very easily just said, well, you just bought the wrong gun, dumb, dumb. Let me hook you up with the right gun. Well, it, there's, there's techniques for, for every aspect of right. shooting. and But he it, didn't have to do that. I think that right. was my point. He could have very easily just said, come on down, we'll sell you a new gun. Yeah, right, but, but I mean, what's the I mean? Now let, I got all let's these guns. Learn, let's help you learn. Start to look like Lance. Uh, use the tool you have. Well, yeah. speaking, you know? speaking of Lance, if you do have a gun you speaking, don't want to have, you'll why not it? consign it? You yeah, know, you can and that's it, what I do. Yeah, we can we can consign it down there. You oh, can, really? You can yeah, s- recycle the money. I mean, if you see something new you like, mm. and you got something you're not using so much, life's too short. Yeah, you, know, you take can, it to you know, you, county. You can uh, you can trade it in. I was gonna say it's like a trade in. Yeah, you can trade it in. You can sell it on consignment. You you know it's yeah, there, there's it all down. kinds of way to all kinds of ways to go about it. Well, now that brings up a good point. So if you bring down a gun, you'll appraise it like you would a car, right? And depending on the condition <clears> and da 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 that's gonna depend on. How well, you know, how much money, and they could use that as a trade in on a different on a different on a different one, or we'll just, you know, if you just have a gun you want to sell, we can we'll you know oh, we can buy it outright, right? Or they can consign it if they're not interested in it. But what if the check engine lights on? Oh shoot, that's a car. Uh, uh, yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Buying well, well, the, buying they, the wrong gun's never a mistake. It's an opportunity. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah, if put you, that yeah, on a throw pillow. Yeah, there's there's really no such thing as a wrong gun. The, the, you know, uh, I have customers come in and say, "Hey, what's the best gun for this? What's the best gun for yeah. that?" Yeah. And my answer is always the the closest one to you at the time you need it. That's, That's right. the best gun you can own. Or well, if it's you like want a toolbox. A, yeah, yeah. And if you want a gun for every occasion, let me show you our safes. Right. Because we're gonna need a safe. Yeah, my we're friend. a full Browning safe dealer. Uh, we do, we do special orders, custom interiors, the whole nine yards. With I heard those. you're going to be the installer. Somebody told me that you're going to start hauling them <laughs> on the truck and start putting these safes in. I don't think my little F100 is good. <laughs> I don't think it already rides kind of low. I don't it know. could handle a safe. I don't think your F100 back could handle a safe. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't well, think my, my vertebrae. You have, don't you have a brownie? Problem. I've got a brownie safe. It, it, you know, and I've been filling it up. And because of that, I've been, I took some things down to, Gun Range San Diego to consign, mm-hmm. and because uh, I got my eye on a couple other things, and people's needs change oh, sure, over sure, time. Sure. You might have, you know, you might have been in the out country back in the day, and now you're you need more pistols or something like that. Right. So as your needs change, you, you can rotate them out. Yeah, when I moved from the East Coast, uh, when I was doing a lot of long distance competition shooting, and I moved to California, and I knew that life was not going to be, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't really going to be my life anymore. I had, you know, uh, some serious long range guns. I had, you know, the 50 cal BMG that I sold. I had the 338 Oof. Lapua I sold. Uh, I had and some you other. You regret every minute. I regret every gun I've ever sold. But I mean, again, oh, what, 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 it was, they were, they would have ended up being safe queens just sitting in my safe and not doing me not any doing good. Anything. But, you know. Well, my, uh, my first gun was uh, slightly used. And at the time, I was 21. And uh, it was like fifty bucks cheaper than the same one, brand new. But at twenty one, that fifty bucks made a big oh, difference. Yeah, you know? yeah, I did. So you know, look, if you look at it that way, you, you're helping people out. You know, and people do you guys sell used guns too. Every now and then, we'll say you no know, consignment. Well, consignment. Guns consignment. We'll okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there yeah. you go. So, okay. so they're used. Yeah. It's like a used car and, lot. And, uh, I was going to say, do you have a little used gun lot over here on the corner? Yeah, they got a little corner <laughs> over sometimes there. Sometimes we uh, we'll, we'll have a shelf with a few uh, uh, used guns, whether yeah. they're old uh, range guns or, or guns on consignment or guns we bought from customers or trade ins or whatever. And we get lots of questions. Well, how do you know if a gun's worn in or worn out or whatever? And, and we'll go over all that stuff with you to, to show you all the wear wear marks and things like that. But it's not like it, you know, just like 
buying a used car, it's not the same as it was 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, technology's changed the way the way they make the guns now are changed, the way they do the rifling and the barrel has mm-hmm. changed. And it's really hard these days to wear, to wear out a gun. I mean, it's it's pretty Unless hard. Unless you shoot like crazy. Yeah, I mean, and don't it, take care of it. Like, you know, tens of thousands of of rounds. And I mean, and, and the average shooter just doesn't no, shoot that much. I got a car question. When you buy a new gun, <laughs> is there a warranty? Absolutely. Yeah, there's a there's a factory warranty on uh and it depends on Workmanship. the gunship. Yeah. If you use your American Express, you think they'll extend it? <laughs> well, I one, d- one of it. our listeners just texted me, Kristen, and she said that uh, she has to have uh, a gun to match every pair of shoes that she has. Ah, you that, go, girl. Good, good for her. <laughs> Ask her if she's well, single. We, have, we got yeah. just the guy right here. Be more than happy. Well, uh, let, <laughs> let her know. I can help her accessorize. <laughs> and we have we have Tiffany Blue uh, Farms down there. We have green. We have all kinds of colors pink. down at Gun, Gun Range San Diego. Yeah, pink. Oh, we have pink for rental. I don't know if we have a – last time I was there, we didn't have a pink for sale in if the somebody case, wants to buy can, a pink, I bet you But we can, can make it happen. It. For sure. All right. Well, hey, folks, you got to check it out. That's Gun Range San Diego, 7853 Balboa Avenue in lovely San Diego, 10 to 10, seven days a week. That's the Gun Range San Diego.com. The Gun Range San Diego.com. This is FM 961 North County, AM 1170 San Diego. We are the answer. Folks, welcome back to Sports Radio right here on FM 96.1 North County, AM 1170 San Diego, The Answer. Hey, are you frustrated? <laughs> I can't even say that without <laughs> laughing. By the new California laws for ARs. Well, are you looking for a cost-effective, easy solution that will allow you to keep your AR featureless yet still be compliant? Well, Cali Key easily converts your AR to be California compliant in just two minutes. What is Cali Key? I have an answer for you. All you have to do is go to CaliKey.com, K A L I K E Y.com. That's K A L I K E Y.com. There's a video on there, it'll show you how to do it. And you can do it, like I said, within two minutes. So don't mess around. Get your gun up to date. And go to CaliKey.com, and when you do, tell the folks you heard it right here on Gun Sports Radio. We truly would appreciate it. You know those uh, titanium ones, the, the titanium nitrate uh, Cali keys that we got, the gold ones? They're basically gold. Yeah. So I got a, a BCG that's uh, coated the same so it matches. So uh, I, got, I got bling for my AR. Got bling for Nice, your baby. AR. You know what? This is kind of an open mic segment, uh-huh. and I uh, just wanted to mention to uh, – Michael Schwartz uh, publicly again that um, someone else I know just got their CCW. Excellent. Yep. Uh, when you uh, kind of help open the doors to that, and um, uh, obviously, and then uh, I told somebody about that, and then um, and he uh, he applied and he just got the okay. Well, That's and that, how news. are we doing on CC? I mean, did, has it stopped? No. I mean, did they did nope. they plug full, the hole up? Full steam ahead. We we I'm still I still communicate with the under sheriff. Um, he's kind of been put in charge of making sure that you know if we hit any snags that uh that they get taken care of so, so they're not fighting you at all not putting any barriers up total opposite they're, really yes total opposite they're making this as efficient as they possibly can just following the law well yeah they fit some uh, i would describe them as some uh uh training issues you know mm-hmm. people that didn't didn't know that was, so here's what happened I'll, I'll tell you kind of a little bit of the story they're way backed up because so many people are going in by the way i just got my approval letter you did, yeah. So wow. I don't know who and, you and are, I, and I'm waiting for mine. I had I did my two interviews, yeah, and so yeah, so I just got my approval. But they're they're backed up because so many people are going in, and so many people are, are successful. Um, so what they did is they brought in a number of retired deputies to help with the process, um, paying them, you know, uh, whatever, whatever minimum they, wage, whatever they're yeah. you know whatever they're thirty hour they work do. week. Um, wow. So they've had to bring them up to speed, but there have been some kind of some bureaucratic snafus here and there. But we they've cleared the trail. Uh, they have done a 180. They are issuing CCWs Whoa. in San Diego County. It's still a little bit of a bulky process, yeah. but generally, if you want a CCW in San Diego and you follow 
uh, you know, our instructions, we have a 12 minute video up on our website, San Diego County gun owners.com, San Diego right. County gun owners.com. Watch and click the video. Yep. You can get a CCW in San Diego. It's now been one year. They started the changes last September. We're now uh, one year out and, uh, been approximately 550 CCWs issued in the last year. Wow. I think this next year is going to take it, off. It, it'll be double, triple that. Um, and you're in the process now when you say you got your acceptance letter what i didn't that? get my acceptance uh, letter uh mike did but i had my second interview okay so the process who based, interviews you um one of the sheriff employees okay so it's a sheriff employee. yeah, yeah say it's an interview it's just kind of it's an appointment it's you know with a clerk and they're kind of looking at you to make sure you know yeah i mean really what's happening is you download the app online you and they'd like you to fill it out online it's your name address phone number right you know, what guns you want to use, whatever the case may be. Um, then when you bring that in, the clerk's going to sit with you and then ask you if you, you brought the proper documentation. Right. So you've got to bring a copy of a, a utility bill, that kind of stuff. So they know you're a California resident. Yeah, that really what it is, is the first interview for the most part, making sure that you have all the stuff that's required. They book you to come and also your good cause statement. And then um, once that looks pretty good, and I haven't seen it go the other way yet, but let's assume, assume it does, then they'll book you to come back for your, quote, second interview, which really is kind of more of the same. At least mine was. Yeah, the, the second interview is for you to, to submit your full package. And so now the, you're really submitting it. Yeah, the first interview, yeah. they, they just get your ducks in a row. Yeah, because yeah. they could very easily say, eh, you don't qualify. Right. Well, they, yeah. They could, I'm just they saying. They could, but they that's not what they're supposed to. Clerks, clerks are just there to help you get your package. Oh, and everything I see. Together. So yeah. you're not actually talking to a sheriff. No, no, no. no. So okay. there's an approval process, an approval board. So from, they're helping you submit your application right. to a... In, internal review board of some sort right. to be able to look it over and, and then you know to say yeah. yes or no. So, so Joe, are you are you getting a CCW in California? Or yeah, are you just to. mad at California? Uh, well, no, I'm. Uh, I, I have one for Florida, Utah, and Virginia, and I need to get mine for for San Diego. I scheduled my appointment. Uh, I had my first interview and ended up being out of town for work that week. So I got her call and reschedule. Gotcha. So here's the number. On their website, 1,682 CCWs are currently issued. That number back in last September, a year ago, was around 1,100. Mm -hmm. So we went from 1,100 to 1,682. Up over 40%. And how many people do we have in in San Diego County? Three and a half million. (laughs) I got to tell you guys, so Orange County went from 950 to about 13,000. In about five years. 13,000. So I, I think we're going to beat them. I talk to my boys in Texas, and I tell them these stories. And I go, I tell them, I said, we got 3 million people in San Diego. How many CCWs you got? Oh, I don't know. What, 25, you know, 25 million? No. No. Well, you know, the highest concentration is the state of Alabama, where basically uh, one in five people have a CCW. No kidding. One in five people in that state. Wow. Well, why this, that is. And this is, again, why we brought in Firearms Legal as one of our advertisers. Right, right, because sure. you, you've got to have the, the full package. Yep, I'm a member. Yep. San Diego County Gun Owners to keep yeah. our rights. We've got the show going. Yeah. And then the training down at Gun Range, Gun Range San, San Diego, Diego. And, Absolutely. and buy your stuff. Yeah. I'm really... You know, and we got Trident. If you need to work on your they, stuff, those guys are amazing. And you know, you're are, not any good chasing springs like uh, yeah. Michael. I'm horrible at it, but I am really good at dropping my shotgun off at Trident, and they're working on it again for me. So those all guys right, are yeah. that's awesome. Yet that's again, it. but yeah. those two. Th- I got to tell you guys, there is. So, I, I know there's a lot of bad news when it comes to uh, Second Amendment and California, but there's so much good to concentrate on. Go get your CCW. Go distribute our, our right. voter guide. Right. You know, become a member. Come to our get meetings. Get involved. There's yeah. so much good going activist. on. Quit complaining and yep. get involved. Yep. Hey, and real quick on that, if we have a second, um, the San Diego, the Young Republicans had a ATF night. Yeah. At um, Gun Range San Diego. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I missed it. How was it? That was wonderful. Everybody Those has guys fun. Are great. We set up a, a smorgasbord of firearms. How could you go? They, I, they told me I was too old. <laughs> oh, young at heart day. <laughs> no, they said, all. I just uh, said, dude, you're way too old yeah. for our group. It was young Republicans and Mike Schwartz night. I told them I'd stay awake. Yeah, but they sign up, they go, they go shoot, then they go to a local. Yeah. I restaurant. actually, Wendy, Wendy, I was, I was at another event. Wendy ran that, so she's, she's much younger. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> nice. Right. Hey, we got some great advertisers. I want to throw a couple more words out to them. Hey, are you frustrated by the new California laws for your ARs and looking for a cost-effective, easy solution that will allow you to keep your AR featureless yet still be compliant? Cali Key. New advertiser, unbelievable product. Easily convert your AR to be California compliant in just two minutes. Keeps uh, your entire collection intact at a price you can afford. It's not super expensive. So check them out. 
and that's the new Cali Key and Future Proof for your AR. Go to CaliKey.com. That's K A L I K E Y dot com. K A L I E K K A L I K E Y. Cali Key. Just go to Gun Sports or GunSportsRadio dot com. And I also want to throw out there. If you or any of your family members uh, keep a firearm, well, we got a protection plan for you. It's called Firearms Legal Protection. Just go to www.firearmslegal.com or call them at 844-357-9400. What does that do for you for $10 a month? 24-hour-a-day legal representation. And last but not least, this is more of a PSA. Are you beginning an intermediate or uh, advanced pistol shooter? Well, do you want to shoot outside and have some fun and get better at it? Now's your chance. When? Every first and third Saturday of the month, 7 to noon, where Lemon Grove Gun Club in Alpine. Why do you want to do that? Well, to help shooters increase their safety, their safe gun handling and skills. And how much is it going to cost you? $15. You heard us talk about them all the time. Check it out. If Lance can do it, then you can do it as well. Call Paul Lynchenstein. He is the match director at 619-540-9600. Did I see a Facebook or a Facebook post that you were up at Lemon Grove? Yeah, just now we just went and did uh, our uh, sporting clays up in Lemon Grove today for our 10 ring members. Yeah, it was I hot sh- enough sh- in San Diego City. They had to go I play. shot a 31. By the way, just just as a point of clarification, the Cali key, yeah. um, it's the op. It's not for featureless. It, it actually makes it so that you can have features on your AR. Oh. So it converts your your AR. It's a wonderful product. I, I have one. I'm very happy with it. Right. So it's not for featureless. It's if you don't want to go featureless. It's to uh, if you want oh. to keep all the features on your AR. Um, and continue to have your AR without having to register. Well, and, now you can't register. As a well, a lot of people miss the registration, but yeah. so you could sl- you could slap a Cali key in there and you're good to go. Slap a Cali key Seriously, in there and you're folks, good to go. You, you are should look future at Cali key proofing, and, future proofing your AR. And what they mean by that is with the new laws that are coming. So take a look at that Cali key, slap one in your ARs, and you're good to go. Super. How sweet can it be? How sweet. What else it you got? Is. Anything else before we throw you guys out? Well, I will tell you again that uh, uh, as I, I, I said many times before, all these people were complaining when. When Mike would say, hey, man, join us, uh, San Diego County gun owners, they, gun owners, they'd say, CCW, and away we go. Oh, no, no, absolutely. Hey, we want to thank San Diego County gun owners. Go to San Diego County gun owners.com, the gun range San Diego.com, CA firearms law.com, firearms legal.com, Trident gunsmithing.com, and Cali key.com. And thank them for all our support. This is what keeps you guys informed right here on. FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. Gun Sports Radio is sponsored by Love Radio Network.